Hi, Mrs. B here. I'm going to show you today how to make a game for times tables at home. Lots of parents and children, and even some of my adult students now, struggle with timetables. And I know it's something that at home, parents think we need to sit down and do a test. Test our children. No, you don't. Let's make it fun. A simple game to play today, just using two sheets of paper. I'm going to put those two sheets of paper together and fold them in half lengthways. Crease down the middle. Okay, there we go. White and yellow. You'll see why I've got two different colours shortly. So as they're folded in half, they're going to turn and fold them in half again the other way. Don't forget to crease. That's going to help us when we come to cut out later. Now that we've got two halves, I'm going to fold each of those halves into three. If you wanted to get a ruler and measure to be really accurate, you can, but I'm not bothered too much about accuracy. Okay, three folds on the other side. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to open it all out and snip it down the middle here. Get my scissors. If you haven't got different coloured paper, it doesn't matter because you can just use different coloured pens, which you'll see in a minute as well. <clears throat> I'm now going to cut each uh, each strip in half, so put those together again and snip through the middle. Now it's getting quite a few sheets there, there's four, so I'm just going to snip through those together along the fold lines and that one, that one and that one. Now we can see that the yellow and the white are all mixed up. So I'm just going to separate the coloured paper out. He said that we can put questions on one, uh, one colour and answers on another, which is going to help us for when we play matching games. Get the children involved in this as well. That makes it even more fun, doesn't it? They can take ownership then and really enjoy what they've made. doesn't matter which colour you choose to write the questions or the answers on. And then I'm going to start now with my felt tips to write out the facts. I'm starting with a two times table as that's the first one that we learn. And your children might be able to already count in twos. So here we go. One times two. Two times two. All the way up to 12 times two now. Run over sheets now. Oh. I must have a piece of paper stuck somewhere because I've run out. So I'm just going to check back. There we go. It's hiding there. So my last fact, 12 times 2. Okay, so there are all my times table facts. Now for the answers. So this is where I said it doesn't matter if you, if you haven't got two different coloured pieces of paper or card because we can use two different coloured pens. And I will show you with the pen so that you can see even though I've got the two different coloured paper. So we started with 1 times 2 which is 2 and again I'm going to go all the way to 12 times 2 for my answers. And 24 for 12 times. So now we have, need on the pen so it doesn't dry out. All the answers for the two times table and all the facts for the two times table. Now, there are many different games that you can play. This is really the fun part now where it comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay out all of the two times table facts. And then we're going to play a matching game. Now you can make this uh, quite competitive and do it against the clock or set a stopwatch, whatever you want to do. I would start really easy though, if your child's just setting out to learn, build up their confidence and get them just to match answers and facts, okay? When you've laid all the facts out, this is just one version to play here. You'll notice that all the answers are in the right order from 2 all the way to 24. But the facts are mixed muddled. So what we're going to do, the first game, is getting your child to find the fact to match the answer. 
they've not got to do both so keep it quite simple to start so we know that the first times table fact is going to be 1 times 2 we've got to locate it on the fact side 1 times 2 match to 2 get them to say it as they put it down as well so 1 times 2 is 2 next one the answer is 4 we're going to find 2 times 2 looking down look for that 2 2 times 2 match it now it's going to be 1 2 3 times 2 where's 3 times 2 here it is match it up next 8 is the answer 4 times 2 so you can see we've now matched all the facts with the answers in the correct order to move on from this, when you're confident with this and your child is confident with what they're doing, then you can mix up both. So mix up the answer side and mix up the fact side. That way they've got an extra challenge to find them all and put them in the right order themselves. So you can see I'm just doing a bit of mixing up here. And mix up the answers as well to make it more of a challenge okay there we go and again bringing in that competitive edge if your child is competitive as well and getting them to do it against the clock or set a stopwatch timer so we've got to find the first fact one times two here it is find the answer two two times two there we go four two four next three times two next answer six all the way to the 12 times and then we've matched them all again now another thing that you could do with this is that you could have the parent or the other sibling call out the question and the child's got to find the answer or the other way around i've got an answer can you find the fact see how quickly they can do it Another version of doing this I would do, and I did used to do this with my girls and we used to like, was post-it notes. We used to have sticky notes with the questions and the answers and we used to stick them on the walls and the doors. I'll show you that another day. One more version of using the fact cards that we've made today then is a matching pairs. So turning over all the fact cards and the answers and this is where you'll see my reason for using two different colours because we can easily distinguish between questions and answers. Okay, so it doesn't matter then if they get mixed up. If you had different colours, then you might just get mixed up with finding a fact and an answer. If that was to happen, what I would suggest is using your two different colours, just put a little mark or a cross on the back of the paper so that you know which one is which. <clears throat> okay. I think I'm going to ask Miss B to help me here. So I'm going to turn over a fact and then an answer to see if I can match the pair. Eight times two. I'm going for this one. Ten. That's not right. Over to Miss B. Six times two. Is she going to find the right one? Six. That's not right. Turn it back over. Keep on playing until you find a matching pair. I'm going for this one. One times two. Well, that's easy. That's two. But can I find the right answer? I'm going for the top one. Yes, I've got it right. So I win that pair. Miss B, your turn. Ten times two. Is she going to get the right card this time? Yes, she's done it. Ten times two is twenty. And get your child to keep reinforcing the facts and the answers as they win them. So that game, we will carry on playing until we've won all the cards. And if you want to find a winner, whoever's got the most cards and answers with facts on at the end is your winner. Cool. Um, ideas for making times tables fun at home. Don't forget about those post-its, but we will do that another day. And these can be done for any of the times tables facts. So if your child is in reception on year one and just learning twos, fives and tens, or if they're in key stage two and they need to learn the harder times tables. We can also mix them up with division facts as well. Keep looking out for new videos and we'll show you some more fun things to do at home real soon. Bye!